Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the Sewing Specialist at Fonz & Porter. In this Quilt & Quickly tutorial, I will show you how to assemble the blocks for the quilt called Alice's Star. For the pattern for this quilt, visit our website. Okay? Our block looks like this and we will break it down and create the different components within it. It is created from a variety, as you can see me, behind me in the quilt, a variety of um, two and a half inch wide strips, blues, pinks, reds, purples, and greens into brown. And then we're using coordinating fabrics, so we have some consistency. We have a background as the light, and then we have two different tan fabrics and two blue fabrics. Now as I slide this away, it is what we would consider a one block quilt, but it becomes sort of a two block quilt because of every other block, the center and its coordinating tan, go back and forth across the quilt, they alternate. So you'll see that there's a subtle um, repeat of centers within the quilt. So we're going to work our way through the one with the pink on it here, and we'll work through the components that it takes to make this block. Okay, what we're going to start with is from each of the print, uh, follow your cutting instructions first for how many strips and squares and things to cut because you're going to be cutting, um, having some strips for strip sets to create the four patches that you see here in the corners. We're going to have some squares that are going to be used in making the flying geese units that are here. Some rectangles that go with those for the flying geese. And then we'll have the two different blue fabrics and their corresponding tans that will go into the centers. So just follow along the instructions for the cutting of those components. Now we're going to work basically to create the outer corners first. And here we've created a strip set, pressing the seam allowances toward the print fabric. And then from that, we're going to be cutting um, some rectangle pieces. Find my ruler here, quick. Now when you're wor working off of strip sets like this, um, you're going to want to make sure that you keep uh, everything nice and square. Because as you cut along a strip set, you need to go back and um, correct the beginning cut. And I'll show you what happens after we cut a few of these. Now these are, we're going to be cutting two and a half inch wide units. So if I were to cut two of them, that would be five inches. I'm going to overcut the first one, making sure that I'm over the um, ragged edge here, so I'm going to trim it away. So we're going to be cutting two of them off. I can rotate this. The more you cut, the, the better you become at it, and the measurements come in your head. I'm going to clean away this ragged edge. Whenever we're putting together strip sets, fabrics are never the same width. So we are always going back and cleaning up the outer edge. We're going to divide this in half. That would make it two pieces, which would then become, by rotating one, a four patch, which we will stitch here in a minute. But as we become, uh, go down the strip set a little further and a little further, we tend to have kind of a wedge shape um, happening here. It's not staying straight. So sometimes we have to go back and correct the end of the strip and continue cutting. That's just one, it's one extra little cut, but it's worth the time to keep your accuracy um, throughout your quilt. And your piecing. So we're going to be creating simple two pa uh, four patches and you would probably want to cut a bunch of these at once, sit down to the sewing machine and then using your most accurate quarter inch seam, um, it's time to do some of the, the easy piecing but also um, some of those th times we get a little sloppy and, and double check our quarter inch seam so we're staying nice and accurate. I'm going to show you a little technique in the center, how you can keep your seam allowances nice and flat also, is that when we have opposing seams like this, we can come in and open up that center, it just pops like this. The seam allowances are now going to be pressing all in one direction. So I can take that to the ironing board. Best thing you can do for your quilt is to stop and press. Um, we tend to want to use our fingernail or say, I'll press it later. Um, half of the battle of good piecing and accurate piecing is pressing. So take the time to press in between each seam and create those nice, neat four patches that go into the corners here. Okay, now we have, we'll create a whole stack of those. Four matching ones go into a block, so you would keep those together. Now we need to create 
our flying geese units, which are these here. And you're going to, again, be creating four matching ones. So I've got pieces here so we can talk our way through making flying geese. This is the block we're going after. Now here we're going to be using a diagonal seams method. So we're going to take our favorite marking tool. On the back side of two squares like this, we're going to be putting in a stitching line diagonally, corner to corner, which will become our stitching line. And you can use your favorite marking tool for this. As long as it's an accurate, gets up against the ruler nice and neat, creates a, a line like this. Now, what we need to do is to stitch pieces onto the corner and we're going to open it out like this. But we can only stitch one at a time, so we're going to We'll go ahead and stitch one. And remember, it's on the line that we've marked. There are times when we um, put in diagonal lines that are a quarter inch off the center, but in diagonal seams method, it's sewing corner to corner. And then we're going to press the seam out towards the corner like this. Again, take time to, to go to the iron. I've got one that's already pressed here. So we can see that I've pressed it nice and flat, and then I've gone in and I've removed that outside corner because we don't need the extra um, thickness underneath. And then you can take your second square, place it doing the same exact method, stitching corner to corner, pressing the fabric toward the outer corner like this, press again, and remove that underside triangle. You're going to create four matching of those. Then it's all about arrangement. And so you can see here that if I were to create this block, I create center square, create rectangles on each side, just laying them over the top of the block that exists. And then your four patches are in the outer corners. Now, I believe in this pattern, what they have you do is to take these light fabrics and we want to have the blocks match in width. So you're going to go through each of your flying geese units. Mm, not in that direction, though. You would need to seam where the V is to the tan. So seam along here, join that, and then press to the um, tan fabric and then you'll have blocks that join together. So you can create, whoops, create rows. The top row would look like this. This unit joined and then another four patch you create a row and then the center row and then the bottom row. And you're going to be creating um, blocks like this without sashing, without borders on the quilt, block to block, alternating. If you look, the dark navy blue is in the first block, then the lighter blue, the navy, and through to you get Alice's star. For more of our Quilting Quickly tutorials, visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.